What is up, goons, gangsters, and gamers? It is your boy, the Good Sir Knight, and today we're doing a review on the Opscore Force on Force Mandible. So originally I was going to get the uh, carbon fiber one that needed the special skeleton arc rails, but don't have the skeleton arc rails. So I ended up picking this up sometime uh, roughly last year. It's a cool little piece that I'd be able to use for a few things. I really wanted to see a lot more about it. I've seen pictures about it. I remember it being talked about in SHOT Show for a wee bit, but no one <laughs> apparently seems to have ever really bought one and definitely no one's really done a review on it. So I figured it'd be an interesting thing. So it's designed to be used with the Step and Visor, which I would also highly recommend because as you're gonna be covering with the ESS goggles, they're a lot more of a pain to get to fit properly. Although you can do the normal uh, normal shades, that's pretty easy. So without further ado, got the mandible here. We're gonna take a quick look at it. Uh, actually, we can wear it real quick. So even with the um, attachment on the back for the Velcro, which covers the ears, which gives you, uh, you can wear the amps underneath it, although it is a bit challenging and definitely a very tight fit. So it's ultimately going to be better, but this is designed to stop, I was up to 760, uh, 7.62 UTM rounds, so the training sim rounds and whatnot, and it does give you a good deal of uh, blunt import uh, impact protection up on the grill, so you know, you got your defenses up there. But ultimately, this piece here that mounts into the, um, arc rail. It has its own little mini arc rail there so you can still make, make sure the uh, visor is mounted on. You got your little bit of jaw protection. And this actually is relatively thin out here until it comes up to the front piece and that's where you get all of your uh, nose and teeth protection because uh, breaking your nose and uh, losing teeth is not, not really something you want to be doing in training. You want to be, well, you know, training and you need a relatively safe environment. You got to take proper precautions there. And of course you got this fun little mesh mask that goes on over it and that gives you a lot of your face protection. That's got these little um, little, like, little foam inserts there that gives you your neck protection as well as your, uh, uh, I guess the sides of your mouth, Te your side teeth molar protection is all up in there. So let's go ahead, we can throw this on. We don't need to undo the back. Your results may vary, but I got a cam fit in here. So we're just gonna slap that on real quick. You get it fitted like so. Reach in there, we got our little chin strap. We're actually gonna get that done, so everything fits on like so. And then you just drop the visor in, and that's it. And the helmet looks cool as hell. So you can see there's this little bit of a gap here. If I'm looking uh, down, if you're looking at me from a top view, there's a bit of a gap. That gap is important. That's where all of our ventilation is because we don't have any sort of like vents or anything here to help disperse any heat coming out of our face. All that's gonna be coming back up into the goggles. Now, I do have the gaskets on. And the gaskets aren't great for goggle breathability, but they do give you that extra protection. Although you do got some pretty decent side protection there. So you might be able to do without it. Now you can, a lot of people are gonna be afraid that the shot's gonna come in from directly straight down and onto their nose. Probably not actually going to happen. Although if it does, your teeth are still relatively protected. And this padding goes a long way. And if you get shot in the throat, it's uh, not a good time because that could get underneath there, but you got a good chunk of protection with that uh, insert, so. The, me the mesh does actually come apart from the base there, and they can also take all this stuff out, so. Cool stuff. Um, during the winter time, or really a lot of the time, if the goggles are cold, you're definitely going to be seeing your breath coming up on them. When I was trying to film this a couple weeks ago, that was one of the big key issues I was having, is that fog up until the goggles would get a bit warmer, and then they'd be okay. But of course, you can always take out the gaskets and make that a bit easier. You do have a good chunk of protection all around your eyes. So no concerns about octal injury, nose, teeth, anything crazy. You're not going to get knocked out on the jaw or anything too crazy. The ears are a bit thin. Getting shot in the ear is probably going to suck, but I don't think it'll kill you. And yeah, so that's really everything there is to talk about wearing it. The goggles, you can pop them up, get some breathability going. Although I think you're going to get more breath on them this way than having them locked in and ready to go. So with that out of the way, we can actually take the goggles off here real quick. And if you don't have the step and visor, you can always get the uh, shades. Where are my shades at? One sec. Go over here, pop open this bag. You got just your normal ESS shades. Grab those real quick. You can run it with these. You're not gonna get as much safety, but it is something you could do. If you throw the, go the glasses in there, you get your eye protection. You don't got, you can put the gaskets in. The gaskets will work. And uh, you lose a bit of your nose protection and stuff, but. You're still relatively safe. Still gonna be keeping your eyes safe with ESS. Although I think the Opscore uh, step and visor just looks a lot cooler. Now, if you don't got your helmet seated well, if you're not using um, 
was it a cam fit or anything that really locks it? I think Opscore's got better uh, headgear nowadays as opposed to their old uh, retention system with the OCC dial. Their newer stuff looks like it works pretty well. That stuff will keep your goggles from moving all around. If your helmet's moving, your goggles are going to be moving, so that's a concern. But for the most part, this is pretty comfy. You don't get a lot of breathability. It does get hot pretty quick, just me talking here into this and back into my own ears, it's going to get pretty warm. So it's already heating up a good considerable amount. So mounts here. So if you're not using the ESS goggles, you can mount other stuff in there. So you still got some mount room to work with. Not a huge concern. When you're uh, general donning and doffing, you're going to have a lot of people straight up. What is going on? There we go. Straight up removing these. As you can see, it does open up your ear a considerable amount. So, still looks pretty cool. Dun, 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 Anyway, all that aside, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start actually taking it apart. So, heard the defenses part. So, the way this is all mounted together, there are four bolts. Little screws they actually work almost identical to the uh, standard um, ACH bolts and the uh, other Opscore Gentex serve bolts. They got that little... Uh, silver pin on the side here. I'll actually take it off. So removing this sucks a lot more compared to putting it on. There's little nubules, nublets in there and that's what locks it into the uh, sides of the rail and that makes it a pain to take off. So however, with a wee bit of determination, there's a trick to it. I can't explain the trick, but you get the hang of it after a while. Yeah, there you go. We're gonna put the helmet down over here real quick. And yeah, if you take a look, there's a little nubule right there and that's what's giving you most of your hold next to these standing up in place. This is semi-flexible so you can run this on a variety of helmets. I don't see a reason it wouldn't work on an ACH. It would definitely work on a uh, Cry airframe but as you see with these little screws here they use the same little silver mounting thing that you're using on the ACH and all those other cool Gentex uh, retention systems and you use that to adjust it so it could be lower, farther back, higher. We've got, uh, Customized to your own facial setup and whatnot, so you get that prediction. If you put it right up on your face, you're gonna have a harder time getting the goggles in there. They're not gonna work as well. And I totally forgot. So the ESS goggles, the problem with them that I encountered, I forgot to do this before I ripped it off. Oops, is that they uh, get caught up on that nose piece. That's your big concern there. So you're not gonna get these flush against your face. They're gonna be hitting the helmet at some point. So technically doable, but a huge pain. I think you'd be better off using the glasses or actually getting the uh, step and visor itself. So if we look here, you can also see the uh, Velcro It's designed. So when it's maxed out, I've mine about a medium level. So I'm only using like the middle two. If you max it, if you max it out, you'd be using the farther back. And if you make it as close minimum as possible, you'd be using that, using that one. This is held in by some Velcro bits. There's one on each side here, and then it all comes up under this nose piece. So we're going to get to the, uh, the actual skeletal structural here by taking these off real quick. We'll come back, we'll talk about the mesh here in a second, but I want to cover the uh, meat and potatoes injection molded crazy plasticky material they're using to put this all together. It's pretty impressive. Also, there's a bit of a uh, material here on the base and that covers up that part there. So you pull all that off. Hey, we're gonna do all these Velcro bits here and that's just ripping away. Now it comes out. There you go, this is the main meat and potatoes. I can take these nubbles off, but that's just for the uh, what you call it, step and visor, mounts up like that. And this is the main meat and potatoes. This little bit of a frame isn't a huge issue, but it's something to take into consideration because if you're going to be using your sights and stuff, that's going to be up around jawline level, and that's usually where you get a nice cheek weld. So, so you got two here, so up and down, forward and backwards. You want to set that up to whatever is most comfortable for you and get you a good amount of uh, breathability. Opscore logo up here on the front. And you can take this apart so you can actually be done into, done into uh, three pieces. So, cool little thing. You can't really use this as much on its own. You'll look uh, incredibly silly. But uh, yeah, so, cool little piece. As for the mesh mask, you can pop that open here. You can see you got your, well, your normal basic stuff really. But on the inside here, where all that black is, that's um, little baggies. That's holding that uh, material in there. So we can actually pop that open and you can see that's what the foam material looks like. There's a top piece that covers up into here and then there's a bottom piece that's this big part. And if you're so discerning you can actually take it apart from right there. So you can separate the bottom mesh from the top mesh depending on how much neck protection you want to get. So putting this all back together 
takes no time at all. So if you need to take this out so you can wash it so it doesn't smell like gym clothes because you've been uh, blasting your buddies because, you know, you're wearing uh, woodlands and they're wearing deserts. And that's uh, all it really takes to cost beef, isn't it? <laughs> In the training world. So we're going to take this, we're going to put this back together. This fits on over here. Uh, make sure all that Velcro is nice and cozy. Don't want any uh, stress points or anything too crazy. And there's a little little rails where you're going to put in these extra bits right through there. So it's not a terribly complicate, complicated procedure or anything crazy. You take the foam out, you wash the material, you'll air dry it. Probably the safest. You just slap that back through there, get that Velcro back together. Come up on the other side. I totally forgot to do a lot of things while I was wearing the helmet, and they're all crucial to the review, so give me just a second here. I'm going to show you how quick it is to put this back together. Getting the adjustments just right isn't too hard. You set the uh, frame up the way you think you want it, then put this back on, mount it to the helmet, make sure everything's good, and make sure you're getting good uh, breathability with your uh, goggles. So for the mounting portion, I like to go uh, two clicks in, personally. Your uh, results may vary. Two... And then you take the other side and same thing. One, two, and hey, we're back in. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to set this up in advance because I know I can put it on without any crazy effort. Back together. Let's stop throw in our uh, step advisor. And uh, yeah, just like that, we've gone from just normal goggles to uh, let's go partner. I like keeping these relatively far forward too. So your results may vary. Grab the helmet, pop that back in. Yeah. Also, if you haven't uh, subscribed, if you don't, if you're not aware, there is a uh, cool Patreon. So if you want to get like cool Good Sir Night shirts, I got a plan to put a few more together and we can get those sent out. Currently, it's just me and my only other patron. Only two people in the world with these super Gucci shirts. So, yeah, tactical plague doctor. All right, so with the helmet back on, key considerations: handgun, no impact. Everything's gonna work just as fine because you got your iron sights and they're away from your face. No crazy stock causing issues. Now, rifle eyes. We don't need you, G33 magnifier. G33 magnifier, not now. No. Still waiting for the unity mount. So unity mount, big thing. If you want to be able to actually get sight alignment, sight picture, you're going to need that unity mount. Because otherwise, it's going to be way too low, and you're not going to be able to see it unless you hold your rifle like this, and people are going to point at you and make fun. So, yeah. So if you're going to be using your rifle, you want to make sure you have unity risers. Unfortunately, my G33 does not have a unity riser as of yet. It's still in the mail, so can't use it, unfortunately, but ultimately pretty easy, much like using a gas mask. That uh, ridge is right up there, so when you're getting that cheek weld, it's not necessarily a pleasant experience. It's not as deep as I want it, so the unity riser goes a long way at remedying that issue. So that would be my uh, key thing to tell all of you guys about. Um, other than that, everything else works more or less fine. If I exhale really hard, I think you can see the goggles now because they dried up a bit, right? Just <sighs> I can see it. It's like little bits right here, but it's not too crazy. So it is doable. If I took these out, it would breathe a lot better, but that's going to be a good deal of respiration before they actually start to get coated in a thin film, and that's what I'd want to wipe them down. Pop them out here real quick, get a cloth up in there, or take them off, and then just remount them. Of course, in a safe environment. So, of course, if it could take sim rounds and crazy paintballs and stuff, then if you're so inclined, or you're in a country that doesn't let you play around with real firearms, and you still want to be pew pew pewing at each other, on the cheap, you can use uh, Airsoft. Recommended. For legal reasons, all I ever have on camera is Airsoft. So... Uh, that's all I really got. If you want to take this off, you just move the visor up and bam. It's cool. So, <laughs> cool factor is my big thing. Considerations for the heat. But if you're going to be blasting each other with subsonic munitions in a safe and a healthy training environment, or you got airsoft guns and you have extra gear anyway and you want to just blast each other because it's still fun and it gets you some exercise and competitive edge. This is a cool little piece of gear, however it is on the pricier end, so as I've seen, particularly with, uh, was it all the Marines on the Mew and stuff, when I see them doing sim round training and they got their old school helmets on, I see them running, <laughs> they got them wearing the uh, 
actual airsoft mesh mask just uh, mounted underneath their helmet, and that's where, and then they got got their ESS goggles on, so that's the uh, cool way the, uh, the Muse is adjusting to the problem as opposed to, you know, spending money. <laughs> I thought it was pretty neat, but so that's all I really got for you guys. I think that covers the majority of the mask. It comes out pretty far. You can do a lot of things with the mandible, and it works particularly well with the ESS goggles. If you're using a stocked weapon, be sure to have some type of riser or be ready for a lot of point and shoot and uh, point shooting, hoping for the best, firing from the hip. Just uh, just pretend you're using a, an IR laser, but without an IR laser. You're going to probably be engaging each other from relatively close ranges, given the uh, lower power of some munitions anyway. So that's all I got for you guys. If you have any questions, are you debating buying these? They are pretty cool. They come in uh, three cool, unique colors. To my knowledge, there's like what, black, brown, they do green and or multicam. I don't think there was a multicam one. But they're cool. They're out there. You can find them out in the wild, just hanging out. Not a lot of people. You, uh, not a lot of people. Well, there are people using them, but no one's doing reviews. So hopefully this gives you some uh, insight. Maybe you were debating buying one. Maybe you realize just now you don't need it. And uh, yeah, that's all cool. But most importantly, you get to set your helmet off on the side and it just sits there like this. And it looks cool as hell. Mmm. Yeah, so that's all I got for you guys. Cheers. Stay silver. So if you have any questions, feel free to hit me down in the comments below. And hopefully, without questions, I've answered any questions you've had previously, just looking at this and being like, oh, that's cool. I wonder what's going to happen with it. So um, as far as impact protection, you're going to be relatively safe. If someone's trying to just beat your face in, you're going to have that little bit of extra protection. Also, no one should be trying to beat your face in a <laughs> some munitions event. So... But if they are, and you don't have your guard up at the time, that's uh, better than nothing, I guess. So, cheers, stay chivalrous, and uh, yeah, stay safe, everyone. <laughs> have a good one. Goodbye.